What you're about to hear is absolutely incredible. I was fortunate to catch up with an awesome accountant, uh, Stephen Brigginshaw, and he'd only been in practice at the time of this interview for 15 months. And yet what he's achieved is absolutely staggering. This is a must watch video for anybody who's thinking of setting up in practice or who has recently set up in practice. But it's also a video that any accountant should watch because it doesn't matter how established your practice is, there is so much that we can learn from Stephen. Let's go listen to him now. Okay, so welcome everyone, and I've got a real treat today. I've got a, I'm really uh, thrilled to be interviewing uh, Stephen Brigginshaw, and the big thing about uh, that, that I'm impressed about Stephen is he only been in practice. He's only been in practice for a very short time and achieved so much. Uh, so there's going to be some great things we're going to learn uh, about what you can achieve as a new practice startup. So Stephen, uh, just to set the scene, if you could just say a little bit about you, your background, when your practice started, how, and, and, and what's the current size of it, what's happened uh, since you started, that would be great. Sure. Oh, hi, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Yes, yeah, so I started the, the practice back in May 2012. Uh, so I, uh, I worked for a small local practice in Reading. I uh, did all my training there. Loved, loved working there, so it's from 2000 that I was there, so I was there 12 years. Wow. Um, but decided that it was best to, to break away and, and to, to offer business owners something different, something that I felt was important you know, to be able to actually help business owners, um, particularly local business owners, to, to get what they really want from their business. So they started it for a reason and uh, wanted to make sure that, that they achieved their goal through that. Um, and and so, yeah, I made, I made the big step uh, in May uh, 2012. And I was fortunate enough to take some clients with me. So I, I had a, a running start, so to speak. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been tough. Uh, it's been some great times and hard times of running any business, really. Um, but that's, that's how the business started. And me, me personally, so yeah, I, I started in 2000 after I left A-levels, um, did my AAT and an ICAW became a senior manager at the firm uh, and helped with the sales and marketing and the IT and uh, the innovation as well, I suppose, and sort of um, earned my bones, so to speak, in that practice, yeah, um, which was a, a great foundation uh, for my own practice. And the, the practice now, we have um, one member of staff and we're looking to recruit a second team member. Um, I shouldn't use the staff word, should I? It's a naughty word. So uh, we've got one team member looking to recruit uh, <laughs> another team member. I would imagine in December, uh, January time. Uh, as, 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 well, as long as our goals are, are hit by them, which they should be, and we're working towards. Um, we we run basically work from home, and we use meeting rooms at a local Regis office to meet with clients and prospects. Okay. Um, we have 25 clients uh, at the moment. Um, and we're, we're looking to double in size by uh, the end of next year. So we've got quite ambitious plans uh, ahead. Okay, fantastic. Um, so what, what would you say, obviously it's, it's a very short time that you've been uh, in, in running your own practice, um, but I'm guessing you've, well, I know you've done so much in that time. If, you, if For someone else who's in a similar situation, who's either thinking of starting or has recently started, what for you has been perhaps the key thing that you've learned in the last year or so? I think it's the same with, with any business really, is, is, is planning. That foresight and clarity is key. Um, and that's, ABN has really helped me focus on that, the goals, having your goals written down just to start with is so important. Get them out of your head and on paper, and then you can actually work on what's going to motivate you, what the pain is if you fail, or what the success will be, what you're going to achieve if, if you get that goal. Uh, and then working on an action plan step by step. And, and, and having a, you know, a basic things like budget and a cash flow forecast um, for any business. And, and that's, that's really helped me with the clarity. But becoming an AVM member at the same time as starting the practice, I think, was very fortunate for me um, because AVM is... The, it was the vision I had of what I wanted to do and without having to DIY it so to speak and create all the systems and 
programs and software myself, but to be able to tap into that straight away and, and offer that, that well, what I would call a perfect service to, to business owners was, was key for me. So um, I would say that, that those are probably the two most important points for, from my perspective okay. of starting out. Yeah, okay. Um, it would be useful to perhaps know uh, what, what, over the last year and a bit, what have been perhaps the two or three biggest successes that you've had yeah, well, the one that sticks in my mind was uh, this summer, or the spring summer, we worked with um, a prospect. It was a referral from one of our clients. Uh, they felt they were paying too much tax, so we, we had a, a meeting just to see what we could do. Um, and we, we managed to save them £20,000 a year in tax Wow! Um, by, by taking them through Incorporation Tax Planner. Um, and it's, it's an area that their accountant had assumed um, couldn't couldn't be uh, transferred into a limited company because it relates to property, but we wrote to the revenue to get non-statutory clearance. Um, and on the rule of thumb these days, because because it's a commercial uh, industrial estate and there's a number of units and so on, that you know, we were able to actually say that it is what you would call a bona fide business, uh, not an investment. So that we were able to to transfer that through. So that's been the the biggest. Uh, achievement, I think, uh, so far. The the second one, I think, is the awards that we've been nominated for, and uh, and some that we've won. That that's been a fantastic uh, pat on the back, uh, just to you know keep keep the motivation going and looking to, for the future. Because uh, being a business owner on your own, uh, it can be quite lonely sometimes, and you're not always sure. You have those seeds of doubt sometimes if you're doing the right things, and uh, that recognition's really helped. Um, and and the third thing I suppose is actually just being able to help business owners. For me, it's really important to, to help people, um, the, the people in my family, friends and so on, people, business owners that we come in contact with. So to actually make a significant difference to their, their lives really, through their business, through small improvements in their business, that's, um, I suppose that's, those are the three things that stick in my mind. Yeah. And and the the awards you've won, which are very impressive, you won the uh, the best business award for two thousand thirteen. Uh, then it was the national uh, entrepreneur award that you were best new business, I think. And the other one was, of course, the AVN 2013, 2014 award. You were a finalist in that. Is that correct? They're the three awards that. You, That's right. Yeah, which, That's it, which right. is a great achievement for such a in such a short space of time. Now I know Thank that you. you yeah. Uh, well, well deserved, uh, and I know that one of the things that you uh, use extensively within your practice is what what we call the PMI. So, d- tell us a bit about uh, what that is, how it works, and the sort of results it's getting for you. Yeah, so PMI, so Performance Measurement and Improvement, that's the the key system that AVN provides to to really help hands on with with business owners. It's uh, it's been dubbed Satnav for business because it helps create uh, a roadmap to success so you identify where you currently are where you want to be and, and then how to get there so um, just from you know, a business perspective for us it helps differentiate us from the, the hundreds uh, of accountants in, in, in Reading in Berkshire that there's, there's hundreds of accountants so just to be able to differentiate yourself in that way to say that you have this system and you can actually help business owners um, that's one plus point but the system itself so it's eight steps uh, that will if there's something that's done in each each of the eight steps it will produce a successful business there's no two ways about it from, from the research that's been completed um, and the business owners love it they love to have get their own folder that's got everything in it um, to go through each section and it's the simple ideas that are the best um, and, and the most rewarding I think that's in, in anything in life, really. And, and uh, a lot of the things that we go through in, in the PMI system, the penny drops with a lot of business signers that they think, oh, yeah, I should be doing this. Why aren't I doing this? Just, just the point one, step one, which is having uh, your written goals, your budgets, and your cash flow, and having that on to hand and checking against it regularly. That, for some people, is, is the fuel for their success because that's what's going to motivate them and ultimately bring them what they want. So some some business owners we meet don't know what they want until 
until they speak with us. So it, yeah. it's a fantastic system. Yeah. So do you use the PMI system with all of your clients? I do, yes. Well, actually, not with all of them. I, I, that, that's slightly wrong. So as I mentioned, we, we had a few legacy clients, if you want to call them that, that I came across with us from the old practice. And the practice where I worked before was very much you know, your year-end accountant would be lucky to see the clients once a year, just you know, get your tax returns and your accounts done, and, and that would be it. So for them moving across to, to how we work now, where we have you know, quarterly board view meetings, um, year-end meetings, accounts finalization meetings, speak with our clients regularly and have all these wonderful systems and software to help them. It's, um, it's a bit of a steep learning curve for them and although they love working with me and, uh, and suing the practice, it's, it's still, uh, we've taken some baby steps with them still. So some of them aren't on the PMI system, they're, they're on what we call our two-star service, um, okay. which, which doesn't include the uh, things like board view uh, and the, the PMI system, simply because they're they're not quite ready for it, uh, and that's from that's their admission as well. So we always speak with them just to see how they're getting on and how we can help them. Um, but everyone else is on either a three or four, five star package, and that includes access to the PMI system. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and so, in a nutshell, with those on the PMI system, they're getting more than just the traditional core compliance work, the accounts and tax, they're getting added value on top of that, is that correct? Exactly, yeah, and this gives us that ability to really build a relationship with the business owners because one, it shows that we're interested in their business and that we can actually help them in different areas other than just filing the accounts and tax returns and it gives them a platform to, to build for success, most definitely. Yeah, and Presumably, uh, that if you if your clients are on the PMI system and therefore you're adding more value, doing you mentioned board view, meeting up with them quarterly, for example, that's obviously going to have an impact on 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 price. So how how do you price your services? What processes do you use there? Yeah, so what we we use the uh, the Times Up software that ABM provides, and I've used that from day one. So I think again that, that was probably a fortunate thing becoming a member of, of ABN at the same time as starting the practice, that we were able to put everybody on to, to fairly good uh, pricing structures for us and obviously great services for them uh, from the very beginning. Um, so, yeah, Time's Up been, has been pretty key. And also, I've, uh, I'm a big fan of your book, Mark, um, The Effective Pricing for Accountants. Thank you. Uh, I haven't got the title right then. Um, it, it's, it's really insightful, and I do turn back to it and, and structuring the prices in the right way, particularly with the packages, having the right, the right gap in, in between each of them and, uh, and just taking the, that emotional approach to pricing. Um, that it, it's been key for the success of the practice. That's, that's probably been the, the most fundamental thing, uh, I would say, uh, for, for the success of us anyway. Okay. Uh, one thing I'd be interested to know and uh, is, if, if you're willing to share, is, is what sort of average fees do you get for, with your clients with on, on this PMI package? Yeah, sure. So we have um, a minimum fee. So the minimum fee for our three-star service is three thousand. Uh, so £334 a month. So it's just over £4,000 a wow. year. Um, and and that's obviously something we introduced for all new clients that we, that we meet, all prospects. We do have some clients, as I mentioned, on a two-star service that we're slowly building up to that level. Uh, obviously, they're going to you know, receive that increased value and all those extra services and help to actually build a successful business through that. Um, so at the moment, our average fee is £3,310. So I did, I did the figures uh, recently, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, and that's actually a 167% um, increase from when we started in May. Wow. So even though we got onto Times Up straight away, we've been toying with with uh, the packages, what, what's valuable, what's not, and, uh, and and changing things, and we've had two price increases uh, since the start of using Times Up as well. So we did two. Uh, 10% increases over the past 15 months um, as well, just just to make sure that 
we're getting the right value um, and for the for the great value that all of our clients are getting. Brilliant. So, th- so it seems uh, it seems clear to me that uh, one of the things you've done is you've been very brave in terms of thinking about your strategy and uh, and avoiding the trap that most startups fall into, including me when I started back in 1996. Big mistake, stupid mistake I did was thinking I used to get as many clients as possible. And I remember my average fees were were, were less, certainly less than a thousand pounds. And I know that most. I think most sole practitioners that start when they start up have got fees below a thousand pounds on on average, and yet you're coming in with a a minimum fee as a starting point. They can't be a client of yours, and, and until they're paying what was it three hundred and thirty six a month? I think you said. Yeah, three three four. So yeah, it's just it's just it's just over four thousand pounds a year. So yeah, I, I've been quite fortunate to learn from your mistakes, Mark. <laughs> your books definitely helped me with that, uh, and obviously the the AV, AVM. Um, Methodology towards things it warrants those those prices um, and and generally you, in life you get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Um, it's incredible what you've what you've done because it's brave. There must have been times when you'd made this decision that you weren't going to take on anyone for for less than the three hundred thirty four pounds a month. There must have been times when you're thinking, oh, I need new clients. I need some more work coming. Should I should I drop my standards and just take on anybody does that did that ever go through your mind yeah it did a few times to be honest and i did succumb a couple of times i must admit because you you do have that that worry that as i mentioned before because you, i'm a business owner on my own i don't have that that help to you know to bounce ideas off of anybody else you just wonder whether you are doing the right thing and is there a market for it or not um and there was a couple of times when I've spoken to uh, contractors, you know, where we can't really add much value, uh, and it was a case of, well, we can we can knock out the accounts and deal with the bookkeeping. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty run of the mill stuff. Um, do I really want to be spending my time and Sue's time doing that when when we could be actually adding value to to business owners and improving their personal wealth? Um, so it was difficult, and a couple of times I did succumb to that. And take on a couple of clients that I shouldn't have done, um, but it's it is a learning curve and it's all experience. And uh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't now, um, yeah. but in the past, uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't always brave. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk, you mentioned obviously pricing, and, and you've read my book, and you use Times Up. What would you say if, uh, probably the the, the three. Uh, the three key learning points for you in the area of pricing, the three things that perhaps made the biggest difference in the way that you price. So yeah, having the three packages uh, or, or more than one option for, for the clients to, to buy, that's, that's really important because you don't know whether they actually want a, a service that's more than your standard service or, or whether they're actually you know, prepared to, to leave some money on the table. You don't want to lose that potential for additional services um, and, and the second thing I suppose is is going backwards if you like down the, um, the, the pricing so you always start with your your most valued your highest uh, pricing first you know, your price package first so your five star then your four star then your three star so there's been times when I, I, I've met a client um, in the last couple of months and I didn't expect them to go for the five star service at all I, I was quite surprised but by following that process they said right yeah let's do it this time we want to, we want this help uh, let's let's do it now and uh, yeah I was I was really surprised that, that they uh, that they went for that service so that's probably another lesson is don't prejudge yeah <laughs> never prejudge <laughs> and I've always stick to your system because um, it, it works most definitely yeah you mentioned earlier when I asked you the question, asked the question, what are your, some of your biggest success stories in, in in the short space of time you've been in practice? And you mentioned an incorporation that you did just uh, uh, back in the spring summertime. Uh, how did you price that, and what sort of result did you get? So yeah, the pricing of that was value value based pricing. So again, which is 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 fundamental to uh, to pricing it for our business anyway. That you know we get. Um, we get paid a decent fee for what the, the great work that we're doing and the client gets fantastic value for what they're paying. Um, and, and we use the incorporation uh, tax planning software from AVN to, to price that piece of work. Mm. And it, it's calculated obviously based on the tax savings and 
£20,000 a year is a significant tax savings for this client and, and our fee from that, well, again we, we've got the five star package for, from that client so it was just over £8,000. Wow. Now I'm sure there's going to be some people watching this thinking, who, who, I know from my own research that, that many firms of accountants charge two, three, four hundred pounds for forming limited companies and then you're saying here you've done one for eight thousand. That I mean that that's awesome. What's the secret of getting that sort of price? There's no secret really. I think just just to be methodical and uh, through using the incorporation tax planner to be honest. It, it does the work for you because it, it makes the decision easy for the business owner. They can clearly see how much tax they'll save. Um, by taking the different routes from either sole trade or partnership through to a limited company, uh, and, and it's easy for them to see, um, you know, that, that, that if it was a tax decision alone, that they could make it. Obviously, there's commerciality and, uh, and the legal structure to consider as well, um, but the software provides um, a detailed analysis of what's included in the five-star package, what's in the four, and what's in the three, and in fact, what's not. In the three and what's not in the four, so that the client can easily see what they're actually getting for their for their money, um, and then yeah, it's up to them that they they see value in that most definitely, um, and he, he's really grateful to his client that we're actually going to be saving him twenty thousand pounds a year in tax, and his his previous accountant, um, you know, didn't even think to ask the question, um, so so he's he's over the moon. Obviously, eight thousand pounds is a lot of money to some people, but relative to, to £20,000 per year, every year, uh, over a 10-year mm. period, that's £200,000. So it's, uh, it's nothing really, I suppose, yeah. when you look at it that way. So what would you say to uh, someone that might be thinking, yeah, but you can get a company off the shelf for 50 quid. Aren't you just mm -hmm. ripping your client off? What would you say to that? Oh, most definitely not, no. It, it's, it's the value-added approach again that's important. It's what you're actually doing for that money. Because if, if all you were going to do is uh, you know, either register the, the company or, or, or get one off the shelf, then sure, that, that would be a rip-off, most definitely. But it's that extra time and service that you provide. Like for, for an example, for this client, we had to, to write to the revenue to, to get a non-statutory clearance just to make sure that this business was deemed a business for, for trading purposes to make sure we can get holdover relief for, for capital gains tax. Um, and that was quite a lengthy uh, process in terms of understanding what the information needed to be sent and using our skills and experience and making sure that we got things right and got the right answer from the revenue because it was always in our mind that this was a business. So it was just a case of, of getting that. And, and all the additional services that go along with it. And, and I suppose to a point, the hand-holding as well. I think that's what mm -hmm. clients value the most, yeah. is that you're taking care of them and actually you have an interest in them and their business and helping them get the best possible result for them. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'd probably add to that as well, that, that there's a big difference between merely buying a company off the shelf and doing an incorporation of an existing unincorporated business where you're effectively, you're, tran you're transferring existing business. So you've got things like transfer of going concern issues, you've got transferring employment contracts, and uh, there's much more to it than just simply buying the company off the shelf. But I think that many accountants just, for some reason, just think 200, 300 pounds is all you can charge for that because they're missing out on, on the opportunities we have when we charge the right price to add so much more value. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree, Mark. And we're actually waiting for to hear back from the revenue, um, the share asset valuation department uh, on the goodwill that, that we valued um, when incorporating the business. So there's a potentially significant tax saving, another hundred thousand pounds worth of tax saving wow. for the client there. And again, yeah. we we base that work um, on on a value price approach. So will get paid a, a proportion of the tax saved uh, but if, if the revenue come back and say no there's no goodwill at all then, then we won't get paid a penny for that yeah. work so uh, that's uh, just one of the things to consider when doing value price, price yeah work. so you're effectively guaranteeing that the client will always be better off because the value they'll get from you is going to be greater than the fee exactly Exactly. And if, yeah, and if you can't add value, then I think quite rightly, as accountants, we don't deserve to be paid if we can't add value. 
Yeah, I completely agree. Exactly, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've we've got I think two just two or three minutes left, and there's, and there's just one other thing that I would like to uh, to just ask you about because I know that's something you're very passionate about, and and that's uh, tell me a bit about your involvement with B One G One, how that came about. Yeah, B One G One is uh, is fantastic. So when uh, when I came to the masterclass at AVN back in October two thousand and twelve, Steve Steve Pipe spoke about uh, buy one give one or B one G one as it's known, and and uh, the great things that Paul Dunn is doing there with projects all over the world, just to ha- helping people that are less fortunate, you know, that you know, don't have anywhere to live or don't have access to clean water or, or food or or education. Um, so it's really important to me, as I mentioned before, that helping people generally is, is sort of the, the core reason, uh, the core belief of, of SJP accounting. And for me personally, I'm, I'm really passionate about helping people. So it was uh, it was definitely something that I was going to do once I heard about B1G1 is to, to set up a business account with them, become a business member. And, and what we did is we linked all of our services, so, so our meetings with uh, prospective clients, and our own clients, um, the the accounts that we prepare, the board view meetings that we have, every service that we provide is linked to a B1G1 project. And not only that, so is our email. So every email that Sue and I send, uh, a child in Africa gets access to, to water for a day. Um, just because you know you send a lot of emails, and it's a great way to try and help try and help people so for me it was what you call a no-brainer to, to join up just to help people plus it, it's a differentiating factor from from other accountants again we spoke about the PMI system but you know an accountant that's helping people all over the world and the only way we can help people is through our clients and our prospects and if, if we don't have those then we can't do anything so it's a great way to say thank you to them and actually that's Give them something to well that enables them to give back to society through us. They're not doing it directly, so it's a it's a fantastic organisation, and uh, I recommend that everybody have a look uh, and sign up and see what they can do to try and try and help people who are a little less fortunate all over the world. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, for people who haven't got a clue what B One G One is, just just to clarify, so what is it that you do to uh, help uh, a child in Africa say when you send, for example, emails. How, just how, basically, how does the process work? Yeah, so the the website, the B1G1 website, has a list of I think around seven hundred projects that you can um, either link directly, so impact giving, so it's linked directly to a service or a function that you provide, or you can you can just donate as you would normally. You know, to, to children in need and so on. If it's just a project that, that you're keen to help, you can donate to uh, without an impact of um, a process before, a transaction approach. I think that's what it's called, isn't it? Mm. Um, and, and so it's just a case of going to the website. It's like you, online shopping. You know, you add you add the project to the uh, to the basket, the number the number you want to contribute to that project, and calculates how much that that will uh, be in a donation. Um, and then, and then, yeah, you go through the checkout process. It's as simple as that. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm really, really impressed. We've unfortunately we've come to, kind of the end of our time together. Um, but considering your your practice has been, I think it's what 15 months old. I'm amazed at what you've achieved in such a short space of time. Uh, the, the 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 way you set your practice up with you know, focus on adding value, focus on value pricing, focus with having minimum fees, having the right types of clients. Uh, some brave decisions you've made, and uh, and it's great to see they're paying off. And uh, I'd love to be able to interview in about another year's time and see how the story progresses, because I know that you're going to be on a fantastic journey, and it's going to be interesting to see how things progress. So uh, so thank you so much for the interview, and uh, I'm looking forward to catching again soon, Stephen. That's great. Thank you very much, okay. Mark. And yeah, I'd love to check in in a year's time. That'd be great. Thank you. That'll be great. Thank you, and bye for now. <laughs>